It's the spring of 1968. We just played a gig last night, Friday night, and uh, uh, got home, went to bed, got up about noon, and the phone rang. It was a concert promoter. It says, hey, hey guys, you know, uh, we, we had a band cancel at the last moment on us, uh, a, a warm-up band for one of these new, new British bands coming in. Can you guys make it tonight? We go, where? He said, well, the Valley View Young Adults Club. We said, we'll be there. And that's where this story begins. This gig should be a slam dunk. I mean, the equipment's already in the truck. We just played last night. So we just need to round everybody up and head to Frankfurt, Illinois, which we did. We got there about an hour and a half before we were to go on. As we're loading the equipment in, we're looking at the stuff, and, and, and it was at that point I, I found out who this British band was. I, I didn't know who we were playing with. <laughs> well, it turned out to be Savoy Brown. Uh, I'd heard their record, and I wanted to see these guys, so this was great. Got to see them. Got backstage. They had nice dressing rooms. I think there was five or six of them. I mean, it, it was astounding for, for a teen club to have, but they did. And uh, I could see in this one room, there was Kim Simmons. He was playing his guitar and getting his mind right for his gigging, and the other guys were running around, and, and, uh, and we had our stuff. And so we got all set up, got dressed, got up on stage, and as we went up on stage, their um, road manager says, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Savoy Brown's uh, PA didn't make it. Uh, uh, they, they can use your PA, right? And, and uh, we, we said, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah of course. You know, we, we, had a, we had one of those brand new Shure Vocal Master VA300C machines, you know, like, like over here. I hope this works out right on the video. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so we left that up for them to use. We played our set. Uh, you know, we were we were kind of a a going item at the time. So you know, a lot of the people in the audience knew who we were, enjoyed it. We got done. Savoy Brown moved their we moved our equipment off. Savoy Brown moved their equipment on, and they started playing, and they were good. What can I say, you know? <laughs> I enjoyed it immensely. And so right about the last song they're playing, and then all of a sudden, boom, the PA goes dead, and there's smoke coming out of the VA300C off to the side of the stage. They blew up our PA system. Well, it didn't turn out to be one of those sucks to be you guys kind of a thing, you know. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really concerned about it. I mean, they, they were just apologizing all over the place. Road manager says, we're, we're heading up to Milwaukee uh, tomorrow, and uh, uh, we'd like to meet you. Maybe we'd like to have breakfast. How about the... And he, he pulls out his map, and he looks there. He says, we're going to have breakfast here. We'll be there at, uh, you know, uh, uh, 9 in the morning. He says, I'll meet you there, we'll, we'll make this right, guys. Don't worry about it, you know? So, uh, we headed to the Hinsdale Oasis over the Tri-State Tollway. Hinsdale Oasis had a, uh, had a uh, Howard Johnson's. It was a Howard Johnson's Hinsdale Oasis. So we went in there, got ourselves some bacon and eggs or whatever, and in comes the the, the Savoy Brown guys, they sit down, they order up some breakfast, we talk for a little while, and the road manager hands us this envelope. He says, this should take care of everything, guys. Thank you so much, blah, 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 blah. See you later, and they were off. Well, we open up that envelope, and there was quite a few hundred dollar bills in there. I have to say this, Savoy Brown was very generous that day. Well, this little windfall actually kind of puts us in a bind because we have more gigs coming up. So we're going to have to take that uh, 
VA300C up to Sure in Evanston to uh, get it fixed. It's under warranty, so that's not a big deal. But an idea came around that uh, a 100 watt PA system is just not going to cut it these days. Amplifiers are getting more powerful as time goes on. And while at the time the 100 watt PA was good, now it's getting a little bit inadequate. I mean, we just blew one up. So we decided we were going to double the thing, all right? So what we did was we went over to Mr. Douglas's music over on 79th. Uh, he carried the uh, Sure Vocal Master and Sure microphones and stuff. And, and we ordered up uh, another set of speaker columns for the, uh, for, the, for the PA system. So now we have four speaker columns, you know, which was a cool idea. But uh, another 100 watts of amplifier was another story altogether. It, it really didn't exist at that time. So uh, what we were going to have to do in the meantime while things were getting fixed is break out the old Bogan 50 that uh, somebody got, I think it was out of the, the Holy Redeemer Church. They upgraded their sound system and we got that old Bogan 50 out of there from uh, uh, Father Rugi. Father Rugi was the go-to electronics guy around the neighborhood at the time. Uh, and uh, we'd always go to him to get stuff done. He'd hold teen dances there at Holy Redeemer and stuff. It was, it was really a great time. So we went to Father Rugi and says, you know, uh, this is our plan. We want to double the PA system and, and all this stuff. And he said, uh, he says, okay, I see what you're doing, boys. He says, what you want to do is you want to get a hold of my good friend, Gene Parsons. Now, Gene Parsons ran a place called Power Sound. He was out on 95th Street there in Oak Lawn. And he would build, maintain, and repair all of the sound systems in the gymnasiums and the churches all around the neighborhoods. So he was the go-to guy for this stuff. So he decided that we should go see Gene Parsons and see what he can do about a power slave for us. I remember heading out there with the VA300C manual, which had the schematics and everything inside of it, and I handed it to Gene and says, Gene, we need a, a power slave for our PA. Okay. And he looked at it and he says, well, he says, no problem. He says, we'll make one up for you. He says, you come back in a couple weeks here and uh, we'll be ready to go. So in the meantime, we set up the old Bogan 50 with uh, the, instead of the VA 300, and we got on with rehearsal because regardless of all this repair work and design work that was going on with our recent windfall from Savoy Brown, we still had gigs to play. Well, the big day has finally arrived. We picked up the vocal master from up in Evanston. Sure, they fixed it, it's like brand new. And Gene Parsons just called and says, hey, says your amp's ready, come and get it. So we headed up to Parsons Power Sound and there he was. He was adjusting the bias on the amp, just getting it set up, uh, button the thing up, set it down, and it looked great. What do you think? What do you think, huh? Is that cool or what? <laughs> anyway, he says, here's what you do, boys. He says, you take a guitar cord and you plug it into your PA system's two tape recorder output. And uh, <laughs> then you take the other end and you plug it into the input of this amp. Plug two speaker columns into the back of this thing. Plug your two speaker columns into your PA system. Turn them on and you're ready to go. And it worked just that way. As a matter of fact, it was great. The PA system sounded much fuller. Uh, it sounded a bit louder. I mean, uh, we were expecting it to be twice as loud, but of course, we didn't really realize that uh, twice the volume is actually four times the wattage, not twice the wattage. But regardless, it was a great system, and we used it for the next couple years. 
about that time, the band broke up and we dissolved all the community equipment. And in that uh, dissolution, I got the Parsons amp, which I took and put in the closet and went about my business. That was it. Now, this doesn't mean that my music career is over. I, I go on to play in other bands and eh, more, more successful bands and stuff. Uh, after that, I went on for about the next 13 years till uh, 1983, went on a fateful night at about 3 a.m. at a recording studio in Hollywood. I packed up my stuff and I walked out the door saying I quit. <laughs> and that was it. I went on from there to uh, uh, pursue uh, more profitable ventures. Because, uh, tell you the truth, the, the uh, poverty lifestyle of a rock musician was wearing thin. It wasn't until 2000, 2008 that I decided to pick up the guitar again and start playing. I mean, that's, a, what, that's a, a 30 years <laughs> that I took a little hiatus, but nevertheless, I was serious about it. I wanted to play guitar. Uh, I'd long since gotten rid of all my amplifiers and things like that. The only thing I had was my guitar. And I noticed that I had an old Ampeg sound cube. So that was good enough for practicing, you know, getting my licks back and stuff. So that's what I used. Now this is not to say that uh, I'm going to be needing, a, you know, some stage-worthy, recording studio-worthy amplifier coming up. Not really looking forward to going to Sam Ash or Guitar Center and buying a new amp and all that stuff. And that's where it dawned on me. I still have the Parsons. So what I did was went there and pulled it out of the closet. 38 years, hadn't been touched. Put it up on the bench and uh, I was going to check it out because I I have an idea here. I have an idea for this amp. You know, in all that time, I never looked inside to see what Gene Parsons did. So I decided to take this opportunity to dig inside and take a look. Well, I open it up and it's definitely handmade. Perf board, solid wire. I think it's bell wire he was using and stuff. Just kind of like scra scraps from around the shop built the amp. Really uh, kind of nice, but very, very handmade. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at the output transistors and they're 40411s. RCA 40411. Where? Uh, that's, that's so familiar. I'm wondering where I've seen this from before. And then it dawned on me. What the Gene did, because you know, there's a, there's really, <laughs> there's really no use in reinventing the wheel when you got something you can work with already. So what Gene did was he, he popped open his, his uh, uh, RCA transistor manual, and he paged through to page 424, and there it was, a 70 watt high fidelity amplifier with 40411 outputs. Actually it goes from 40406 through 7, 8, 9, 10, and 211s in the output. It's the example circuit that they're using to show you how to how to how to use these new fangled transistors. <laughs> you know, you know this is the schematic that launched a thousand amps. It really did. In the early days, manufacturers weren't real clear on how to use these transistors. They, they were good with tubes, but the transistors were a little bit, of, and they would copy 
this schematic directly in all the early versions it, it, it's really kind of interesting if you think about it that they would use the RCA tube manual schematic to make new fancy modern solid state amplifiers so here's my big idea I'm gonna put a preamp in it and uh, make it like a guitar amplifier uh, I found this uh, I found this nice uh, uh, preamplifier Ah, there it is. It's got five FETs in it. They're all the same, uh, 2 n 38 19s And uh, right in the middle, it's got a, uh, a, a Fender Tone Stack, where you got a bright switch, treble, bass, mid, and gain. And then right off the end, you got a, got a volume control, so that should all work good. So, I ginned this together, drilled some holes in the cabinet for the pots, got the thing built, and built it up and uh, uh, decided to test it. And I also ran a video of it for less than a minute, but a video of me doing that, to see how distorted I could get the preamp. And here it is. As you can see, it's, uh, you know, Sounds pretty good. At any rate, I used that amp for about oh, six months to a year. I was always tinkering with it. It was getting real flaky. Things were very iffy inside of it until one day I was fooling with it. And it smoked out. It was nice while it lasted. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Uh, there, there were several things about the amp that I didn't like. It's a very old design, and the technology of solid-state amplifiers has definitely improved over time. I mean, for one thing, it's a quasi-complementary output, where, where you got like an NPN transistor, and then you got another NPN transistor on the output, and they're running in push-pull. I mean, if you want a complementary output, you need a PMP and an NPN. It's just that back when the amp was, uh, was first built, you couldn't get good, powerful PNP transistors yet. That changed with time, but at that time, that's all you could do. It made it a little more of a hand grenade. It's supposed to be short circuit proof. Uh, they're really not. And uh, they can burst into flames, as we've already seen. So what I did was I was planning. I was planning. I was scheming while I was using that amp, knowing that it wasn't going to last forever. And I needed a backup plan. So what I did was I, I started looking through the internet at uh, various DIY electronics things and in forums and this and that and I, I came across a guy down in Australia called uh, uh, Rod Elliott and he's got a uh, ESP sound at sound-au.com if you want to learn about electronics audio electronics musical instrument electronics this is a great site chock full of data but what it also has is it has a p27 project which is a hundred watt musical instrument amplifier and it's got a p28 it's got it's the preamp for this thing I looked at those and they were true complementary outputs they were a hundred watts not 70 like Gene gave us and uh, it was a great design so I ordered up the circuit boards for the P27 and the P28 from Rod. And uh, I suggest if you guys are going to be doing this, uh, this uh, uh, amplifier that you order up the boards from Rod. Don't just go wing it. You know, he deserves his little piece of money for that. So I, I generally make in uh, Rod's design verbatim. I'm using some beefier uh, output transistors, a little more heat sink and stuff. but where I really started making 
uh, things custom was in the uh, power distribution. Let's see, power distribution's right around here somewhere. I'll have to find it just a second here. Oh yeah, here it is. See, the power distribution, uh, I got an IEC connector, so uh, you can have a plug from any country in the world go into the thing. I got a, uh, a dual uh, primary uh, power transformer, so I can have, you know, 117 or 234 or 120 and 240, whatever you want, like that. Uh, and uh, I, I did most of the work in the secondary power filter, where uh, I have a, a, a Bantam 12 volts available for effects pedals and things that you plug into it, including, you know, the, the wireless uh, that I was going to build into this thing. I used a, a ground fault detector circuit in the stuff, and this is where most of my custom work was, and this is where most of the Achilles heel of the old machine was at as well. So I wanted to make sure I cleaned this up. I called up my brother Jim from the Chicagoland Gearhead uh, Society and had him make me a new chassis for the amp, new base plate, sent it to me real quick. I went and placed an order with Mauser.com for a bunch of parts and I got into building the thing, which went rather quick. About a, about a, about a week or so of drilling and soldering and this and that, and I got the amp. So there you have it, a new solid state amp. The thing is, this brings up the uh, ancient Greek philosophical conundrum of the ship of Theseus. It goes that uh, this sailor named Theseus, that he had a ship and uh, parts would wear out on the ship and he'd replace them. And over time, one by one, he wound up replacing every part that composed the ship. The question comes up, is that still the original ship? There are people who will say yeah. There are people who will say no. Now, I say it is. Because to say no denies the history of how it became. Which I feel is very important. You know, uh, although I do have this wonderful solid state amp, very reliable. Didn't get me a tube amp. But that's a story for another episode. So until then, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications of upcoming episodes, and I'll see you in the next episode.